Hello, and welcome back. This is the third installment of the high school chemistry video series. Um, today we're going to be talking about elements and compounds, um, and, and I encourage you to follow along in chapter three of your book. Um, there's a lot of great problems and um, a, a lot of great graphs and charts that you can see that'll help you understand the material further. Um, all right, so let's begin. Um, so elements and compounds, right? Elements are the fundamental building blocks of matter. Um, there's, it's sort of all the different varieties that an atom can come in, right? Um, and just like the 26 letters of the alphabet that we can, from which we can, can construct any word in the English language, we can construct any molecule from all the various elements um, in the periodic table. So they're sort of like a chemical alphabet. Um, and they're listed in the periodic table where they can be found in order of increasing mass and complexity. Um, so we're going to see the periodic table soon, but you can actually um, arrange all of the elements in order of how much they weigh, and it turns out that that directly corresponds to how complex they are. Um, and so if we could take a small piece of an element and divide it further and further, for instance like copper, um, we would eventually divide it so much that we would arrive at the smallest piece of that element that still is that element. So um, for example, if it was copper, um, if we were to divide this small piece any further, it would no longer be copper. Um, and so this tiny, tiny piece is called an atom. Um, that's the, the basic unit of an element. So um, we, we have a, a, a sort of standardized way of naming the elements. Um, and it's really, really important for any chemist to know um, exactly how they're named, what their names are, and how to represent them in a variety of ways. Because um, as you see, as you move on through chemistry, through chemistry, this naming system is going to come up over and over again. So um, unfortunately, it's part rote memorization, but um, it's, it's just a task that has to be done. So we'll go over a couple of them here today, but uh, I highly recommend that you look through the book, you look at your periodic tables, and you commit um, most of the common elements to memory. So um, yeah, so every element has a one or two letter symbol. Um, the first letter is always capitalized, okay? Um, and here's a list of some of the most common elements that you're going to come in contact with. Uh, most of them are found in the top three or four rows of the periodic table. Um, so here they are, right? Boron, um, its symbol is B, just a capital B, whereas bromine's symbol is BR. Um, so as you can see here, most of these, uh, fortunately, their symbols correspond to their names rather well. Right, iodine is I, um, but as you can see here, right, potassium has the symbol K. So unfortunately, not all the symbols correspond perfectly to the names and um, necessitates a little more memorization. So I think rather than go over the common elements now, which might be easier for you to memorize later, uh, maybe we should talk a little bit more about the elements who, um, whose names are a little different. So. Um, the reason that they're a little different is that the modern English name doesn't exactly correspond to an older name that was used for the elements, and the, the symbol actually relates to that older name. Um, so here they are, right? Here are the 11 that don't relate. Um, antimony is the first one. SB is its symbol. Um, copper is CU. Um, gold is AU. And you can see as you go down that they sometimes bear uh, little to no resemblance to to the um, names of the elements. So um, you will occasionally see these older names pop up, but for right now, it's most important that you memorize um, and be familiar with the names of the compounds and how they relate. Um, I would say 